Hello, calculus fans. Okay, so let's try to write this integral as a limit of Riemann sums. We're not going to try to evaluate it. We just want to write it as a limit of sums, and then we'll leave it at that. Okay, so the first thing is, if we divide the interval, negative 3 to 2, into n subintervals, then delta x, which is the width of each subinterval, will have to be 2 minus a negative 3 all over n, which is 5 over n. So the next thing we'll do is write down what the partition points are. The partition points will be negative 3 plus k times 5 over n. Whenever we write down partition points, it's always going to be a plus k times delta x, because we want to start at the left end point, and then we want to move over by units of delta x. Now, we notice that the problem doesn't say anything about using left or right hand sums. I'm just going to go ahead and use a left hand sum. If you want to use a right hand sum, that'd be fine. It doesn't specify, so you could use whatever you want. You actually wouldn't have to use either one of those. You, because the definition of the definite integral allows you to choose your sample points any way you like within the subintervals, you could actually choose your points any way you like. In this case, I'm just going to go ahead and use a left-hand sum. All right, so f of x is equal to e to the negative x squared. That's just the integrand. Now I'm ready to write down a limit of a Riemann sum. All right, so the integral is going to be equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of the sum where k goes from 0 to n minus 1 of f of x k times delta x. Now you notice that we're summing from 0 to n minus 1. That way, that's how we're going to end up getting a left-hand sum. When k is equal to 0, then we're plugging in f of x0, and that's the left-hand endpoint of the first sub-interval. Okay, so now we'll plug everything in. And so f of xk is just e to the minus x sub k squared, and the delta x is 5 over n. And now I'm just going to plug in the thing that we had computed earlier for x sub k. And we end up with this sum. And I'm not going to do anything more with it. All I wanted to do was write that integral as a limit of a Riemann sum. We're going to leave it like this because, it, as it turns out, this particular limit of a sum is very, very difficult to evaluate. Okay, that's all for now.